So welcome to today's lesson in fluid dynamics. So today we'll be talking about types of flow, you no know, viscous flow in terms of parallel plates. So there are basically two main types of flow. We have the correct we can have a third type when we combine these two, and that is known as the general type. So in this video, we'll be going through the Pauze type of flow. Then in the next video, we'll talk about the Kuwait. And in the next one, we'll talk about the general type. And in this video, we are going to take our time to explain things one by one to make sure you really get them, okay? So please like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. So, you know, with the pulse flow, we know that um, fluid here is moved by the pressure gradient. But when it comes to the pulse flow, our fluid is always moved by the pressure gradient. So that means that our pressure gradient is non zero, it's not equal to zero. But our initial velocity and final velocities are both zero. So the velocity at y naught or the initial starting point is zero. And the velocity at the end point is also zero. So dramatically, this is what we have spoken about, right? So we have two parallel plates. So you can see the plate 1 here and the plate 2 here. And we have placed a fluid here. So you know when we place a fluid here, the fluid is going to move in this form. It's going to take this form. Right? So with the pulse flow, when the fluid takes this form, you know, this is, we call this the starting point and we call this the end point. So Y end. The velocity at our starting point is zero and that's at our end point is also zero so the movement of the fluid or the fluid is moved by the pressure gradient so here the pressure gradient which is the pdx is non-zero all right so you're going to use this few concepts here to derive the velocity profile for the pulse flow and a whole lot of things okay and that is very simple so one thing that you have to know is that always the ne negative of the pressure gradient plus mu the square u the y squared is equal to zero well mu here is the viscosity so mu here is the viscosity and the dp dx is the pressure gradient so this equation here is going to be very important for us in deriving our wave profile for the pulse flow. So, we are finding the velocity profile. So, I hope you remember this equation. We already stated it in the above. And we impose these conditions on our diagram. So, at the starting point, the velocity is zero. And at the end point, the velocity is also zero. So here, we are supposed to just do some integration to get our u, right? So since we have a second partial derivative here, that means we have to do two integrations before we can get our u. So making the PDS a subject here, we will have the PDX to be equal to mu del squared u del y squared from this equation here. And we want to find for u. So the first thing we can do is to divide u by mu. So dividing through by mu in this equation is going to give us what we have here. Then the next thing we do is that we have to find u, right? So we find the first derivative. So finding the first derivative is going to give us the u dot y will be equal to the integral of 1 over mu del p del x dy. Right? So when you integrate this for the first time, you end up with this, right? So integrating the right hand side is going to give you the u del y equals 1 over mu del p del x y plus an arbitrary constant, let's say c1. So we are done with our first integration, but it's left with our second integration. So doing our second integration will give us u of y will be equal to 1 over mu, then the integral of everything that we have here. And when we integrate this, we are going to get 
u of 5 will equal to 1 over mu times dp dx. So when we integrate this, we are going to get y squared over 2. Then c1, we attach y to it, then plus a second arbitrary constant, c2. I hope you get it. So, what we had here is the general solution to the wave profile. So, you can see we have arbitrary constant here. So, that makes it the general solution for the wave profile. But we are interested in finding the particular solution. So, that's the reason why before starting, we gave initial conditions, right? So, to find a particular solution, then we have to find the constant C1 and C2. And the only way we can find for those constants is to impose the initial conditions we stated above. So we said that at the starting point, the velocity is zero. So that means that our u is equal to zero. And whenever we find y, we also put zero there, right? So that means the whole of this part will give us zero. So we get zero will be equal to c2. So that means that our second arbitrary constant, c2, is just zero. Then we have to find the first arbitrary constant. So the second um, initial condition was that y is equal to y n, like at the final point, the velocity is also zero again. So putting that into the general solution we had, we'll get zero will be equal to one over two mu. Wherever we find y, we put um, y n there. Wherever we find y, we put y n there. So we have to find for this c1 here. So that means that we can make c1 the subject so c1 and the subject so c1 n will be equal to the negative of whatever we have here then since we are finding for c1 we just divide through by y end so dividing through by one end we get something like this and this will cancel one of this and finally we are going to get our c1 to be equal to negative 1 over 2 mu the pdx then y n this happens to be our c1 so we found for our c1 and our c2 which was zero so plotting it into the general solution for the wave profile, that means our wave profile now become 1 over 2 mu dp ds y squared. But this is c1. So c1 is the whole of this. Remember it was c1 y and this is the y. Right? So having something like this, you know we have 1 over 2 mu dp ds. So we can group that like term. Then we have something like this. So this equation here. It's very important because that happens to be the um, velocity profile for the pulsive flow, right? The particular solution. So there is it. Then the next thing we are going to find is the where the maximum velocity occurs, all right? So to find where the maximum velocity occurs, we just have to find the critical value of this equation we call it equation a so this is the equation you know finding for the critical value that means we have to find for the first derivative and equate to zero so the first derivative of this particular function is what is given here and we have to equate the derivative to zero so but du dy is equal to zero so equating that to zero is going to give us what we have here you know in mathematics when you have a times b equals zero it's either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So that means that here is either this is equal to zero or that is equal to zero. So this or that. So you know the whole of this will give us zero. We're interested in finding for our y, right? So we equate this. So you get two y minus y n is equal to zero. When we bring this to the right hand side, we get two y will be equal to y n. Dividing through by two gives us y is equal to y n on two. And this happens to be the um, maximum point, right? Then we want to know the maximum velocity. So to know the maximum velocity, the maximum velocity is found by substituting um, y cos yn onto, into equation A, the particular solution for the wave profile that we had. So making that substitution, we will get... So we have u of y equals 1 over 2 mu dp dx. So this is the wave profile we found. So right now, everybody find y, we are supposed to put y n on 2 there. So here, putting y n on 2 here will give us y squared n on 4. And here we get 
minus y n on 2 times y n, which give us minus y squared n over 2. Alright, so that means our u max will be, you know, this minus this will give us minus y squared n over 4. And multiplying it through, that is going to give us um, u max to be negative 1 over 8 mu the pds, then y squared n. And this happens to be the um, maximum velocity. So the next thing we have to find is the discharge. So the discharge is then the amount of fluid passing through a session. So the discharge is given by the Q is equal to U dy, where here the Q stands for the discharge and the U stands for the velocity profile. So in trying to find Q, then that means we have to integrate both sides. So Q will be equal to the integral of U dy. Then we already have U because that happens to be the velocity profile. So we're making the substitution and we integrate from 0 to y n. So those are elements of integration. So that means we have to integrate what we have here with respect to y. Right, so you know we can pull 1 over 2 mu the PDS because that's a constant. So making our integration is going to give us what we have here. Then substituting the values for substitute the values for the limit of integration that is going to give us what we have here. So after that we have to simplify things and make some few algebraic arrangements and that gives us this. Then y cube n over 3 minus y cube n on 2 gives us what we have here. Then multiplying through gives us q to 1 over 12 mu the pds y cube n and this happens to be the discharge for the pulsing flow then the average velocity but well, the average velocity is given as u mean and u mean is just given by the discharge over the flow area so the discharge is what we have here we've already found it and the flow area is what we have here so that means that the discharge over the flow area is going to give us this has a discharge then over the flow area which is y end so making this division we are going to get negative 1 over 2 mu the pds y squared n and this happens to be the average velocity as the u mean and one useful result that you can get here is that your u max over your u mean is equal to 3 over 2 so meaning that your u max is equal to 1.5 times u mean and there is a question here you have to show why so in showing why it is very very simple remember we've already computed for u max we've already computed for u mean so divide those two from less and it is going to give you three over two and that is just the proof to this statement okay the last thing we are, last thing we are going to find is the pressure drop so the pressure drop is given by um the pdx so you're supposed to find for the pdx but it is involved in this particular formula here from the u mean so we have to make the pd as a subject so the pdx will be equal to whatever we have here and the pds is just the change in our pressure so p1 minus p2 and it should be equal to whatever we have here but we bring an l here right and this l is just the distance or endpoint of the plate or endpoint on the axis right so as far as this lecture is concerned we are done but i would like us to do one thing to find for the shear stress right so it wasn't found here but i think it's very important to find for the shear stress so the shear stress so the shear stress style is given by mu del u del y so we have our u which happens to be the um velocity profile the fluid velocity now one is given us one over two we had on to one over two mu the p dx then 
y squared minus y y end. Alright, so that means finding for the u the y is going to give us um one over two mu the p the x two y minus y n. Alright, so that means our tau that is the share stress to be given us. So remember we have mu here. So it will be giving us mu times whatever we have here. 2y minus yn. And this mu is going to cancel this mu. Then we are going to get tau to be equal to 1 over 2 dp dx. Then 2y minus yn. And this happens to be the shear stress for the pulse flow. So thank you very much for following and i wish you all the best so our next lesson is going to be on the create flow and the subsequent one will be on the general flow thank you